I hadn't met Master Zaka on that fateful day, if he hadn't saved me, there's no way I'd be where I am now. I'm from the Vault's Duchy, where the weather's sweltering all year long, thanks to a river of lava that flows through the island. My hometown might not have been the most scenic place, but as long as I had mastered Zaka with me, I was happy. After traveling for so long, I could finally say that with pride. Before I left on my journey, I was completely clueless. When my master went missing, I just ran around like a chicken with its head cut off. I was looking for something, anything, that would help me find him. And that's when I met the crew. The reason behind his disappearance turned out to be even worse than I could have imagined. The Earth State Empire had driven him out of his mind. They had manipulated him into awakening the primal beast that had lain dormant beneath the ground. Colossus. Fortunately, I was able to break through to him thwarting the Empire's attempt to exploit Colossus's powers for conquest. I learned that they were doing all sorts of horrible things, even to their own people, in order to achieve their goals. My master was a kind person who never hesitated to help those in need. I resented the Empire for making him suffer. And I couldn't just sit around when there was work to be done. That's why I decided to join the crew. To stick it to those Empire jerks and give their victims something to smile about. A few years before I met the crew, I lost my parents to an epidemic. I mourned their deaths for who knows how long. I could barely even bring myself to face reality each morning. With no living relatives and vaults, I was like a ship adrift at sea. I had nowhere to go and nowhere to belong. Until one day, my master reached out his hand to me. I was so depressed I just kept staring at the ground. That gentle smile never left his face as he asked me, why do you look so sad? There was something in his voice that made me look up. When I did, a beautiful bouquet of flowers appeared in his hand, seemingly out of thin air. I had no idea how he'd done it, but I knew it must have been some kind of parlor trick. But he insisted it was magic. What a goofball, right? Saying that when he can use real magic. But it was just the magic I needed at that moment. Beautiful and kind. He went on to show me all kinds of incredible spells, the likes of which I'd never seen. Watching him made me smile at a time when I thought I'd forgotten how. My master would always say that magic exists to make people happy. Something about that spoke to me. It made me want to become a mage just like him. So I signed myself up as his disciple, begging him to teach me magic. I'll never forget how happy I was when he told me I had talent. After all, if he was right, that meant I had the potential to make people smile, too. One day, shortly after I joined the crew, I suddenly lost the ability to use magic. No matter how many times I tried casting a spell, nothing happened. I had no clue what to do. The rest of the crew thought Master Zaka might have the answers I needed, so we set sail for vaults. It'd been forever since I'd been back home. My master was thrilled to see how much I'd grown. I opened my mouth to ask him about my problem, but when I saw how happy he looked, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I promised him that I'd come back as a great mage, but there I was. Unable to cast even a single spell. The last thing I wanted was for him to be disappointed in me. Around that time, an epidemic returned to vaults. The same disease that had claimed the lives of my parents. Wanting to keep it from spreading any further, my master headed to the clinic to speak with the people who'd been infected. But he ended up getting sick too. The source of the epidemic turned out to be an evil spirit that revealed itself to us right there in the clinic. I immediately confronted it. That rotten creature had already taken my parents from me. I wasn't gonna let it take anyone else. Determined to make it pay, I raised my staff. I'll never forget how it felt to watch, helplessly, as my parents' killer got away. The crew gave chase, but I continued to stand where I was. Without my magic, I didn't see the point. I'd just end up getting in the way. All I could do was watch as my master suffered, withering away. Nothing had changed since the last time. But you know, it wasn't all bad. 
In search of a solution to my magic loss at the local library, I happened to come across a beautiful golden staff. One left to me by my mother. That's when Master Zaka revealed that my mother had been a mage too. On the verge of tears, I clenched my staff tightly in frustration. My beloved home and master were being threatened by a disease-spreading spirit, and there was nothing I could do to... Just as I began feeling completely hopeless, the staff began to glow. Somehow I could feel it encouraging me, empowering me. So what if I couldn't use magic? Surely there were other ways to help everyone. Unable to stand around doing nothing any longer, I ran off to find the crew. When I finally tracked them down, they'd already been rendered powerless by the disease. That left me as the only person who could fight. There wasn't a second to lose. It was that moment when I decided I was done running away. I'd promised myself a long time ago that I was going to use my magic to make people happy. Filled with newfound resolve, I heard a voice coming from the staff. Mom? Is that you? The voice told me to visualize the power flowing through me. As I did, I could feel magic welling up inside me, flooding out from deep within. With my mom's help, I was able to defeat the evil spirit. As soon as it was gone, light erupted from my staff. I turned to see the rest of the crew climbing to their feet, their symptoms gone. The power spread through the entire island of Vault's Duchy, eliminating the disease and bringing smiles back to the people. Things were a little touch and go there for a while, but in the end, everyone pulled through. And I've been able to use my magic without any issue ever since. I just know it's because my mom is watching over me through my staff. Thanks to her, I can keep traveling with the crew, using the staff she left me to bring out more smiles along the way. I once gave up being a Skyfarer. Also, I could take up arms to protect my home island. Man, she was special. You see, there aren't too many places in Fana Grande with oceans, much less ones as gorgeous and pristine as a goose. And I'd be damned if I stood by as the Earth State Empire sullied its waters with the byproducts of their weapons research. It goes without saying that I enlisted. Good thing, too, because it was in the midst of the ensuing war that I met the Grand Cipher crew. They helped us. The local mercenaries, I mean. Take a stand against those Imperial punks. It wasn't a picnic, but we weren't gonna go down without a fight. In the end, the war wasn't decided by either side, but by the patron deity of the land, Leviathan, who damn near drowned Auguste in a fit of rage. Anybody's troubles would have seemed small compared to a battle like that, huh? Well, not long after, as if irony was waiting to bite me on the ass, my strange daughter showed up out of the blue. I know what you're thinking. What kind of parent wouldn't rejoice at seeing their child again? But it's complicated. Man, the way Apollonia looked at me, like a wolf staring down her bunny-eared breakfast. I couldn't. This crew, there was something about their vitality, you know? Here were these young'uns standing against impossible odds and coming out stronger for it. Maybe if this old man took good notes, he could eventually have an honest conversation with his own baby girl. So, I asked to join the crew. The next time my daughter and I met, I wouldn't let fear and regret keep me from moving forward. How'd me and my daughter end up estranged? Well, the first thing you need to know is that my wife was stricken by a terminal illness. I refused to listen to the doctors. Terminal my foot. Even if there was no cure in Auguste, surely there ought to have been something in other lands. And so, I left my family at home, crisscrossing the skies looking for a cure. Got into a lot of adventures along the way, and somehow ended up making a name for myself. But no matter how far and wide I traveled, the cure eluded me. And while I, w I wasn't there for her when she needed me most, I never even got the chance to say goodbye. 
Regret and self-loathing crashed over me in never-ending waves, threatening to pull me under. You can't even begin to imagine the pain. And there was nothing I could do about it. It was all my fault. My daughter spent countless days looking after her sick mother, fighting off fear and dread. It's not hard to imagine why she hates me. She must have asked herself time and again, why was her father gallivanting across the skies while his family... By the time I finally came home, she was long gone. There were no other relatives to turn to. The only family she'd known was no more. All I could do was stand dazed and helpless in the cold... After that, 15 years passed. I met the captain, and through my travels with the crew, reunited with my daughter. This might surprise you, but we didn't have a tearful, touching father-daughter reunion the second time around, either. I spent so long telling myself that the next time we met, I'd face up to my past. But when the moment came, I, I froze. What could I possibly say or do for her as a father? After all this time, any courage I'd mustered withered in the face of her scorn, and I was left standing there, feeling like an old bastard. Sometime after this heartwarming reunion, I bonded with Leviathan, and through our link, saw glimpses of what lay in my daughter's heart. I thought I had escaped all those painful memories, but here they were. In that world created by the pact with Leviathan, my wife was still alive. I saw how things might have been if I had done things differently. Of course, I knew none of this was real, but I would rather stay in a world of memory than live in a cold, lonely reality without her. But she wasn't having any of that. She said I couldn't sacrifice my future to dwell in the past. She made me promise to fix things between myself and our daughter. Said she'd boot me out of the ocean if I came back without completing my task. Her words finally gave me the push I needed to face my past and start on the path to a brighter future. They gave me the strength to fight for my daughter in her hour of need. And I'd like to think that I finally did something fatherly, if only just the once. Of course, I don't expect our relationship to be mended with one conversation or act of bravery. But little by little, I think we're getting there. Zega Grande, the Forgotten Skydom. As I gazed into its perennial blue, I reflected on my last time here, during my travels with him. My memories of this place were distant, yet unforgettable. Have you been here before, Rosetta? Hmm? <laughs> Perhaps I have. Who can say? Eventually, I'll share my tales of the Captain's father and our journey together. When the time is ripe, of course. But first, I would need to sort through my own emotions. It was here in these skies that we would eventually part. I know, I know. In the eyes of eternity, our time together lasted no longer than a blink. Yet his impact on me felt nothing short of eternal. Indeed, it wasn't nostalgia that I felt upon revisiting these skies. Rather, it was the significance of this place and all that transpired here that weighed heavily upon my heart. During the war, primal beasts were exploited by the Astrals as instruments of battle. Withered and faded, one primal would eventually drift to Lumacie Archipelago, making a home for herself. Over time, she grew accustomed to the comforts of its forests and the serenity they offered. It was a far cry from the brutalities of war. Centuries would pass until a young man stumbled upon her domain, 
forever altering the course of her life. She engaged him in a vicious battle, but was ultimately humbled in defeat. Accepting her fate, she resigned herself. However, the man would sheathe his blade, and to her surprise, asked if she would join him on a journey across the skies. A primal beast was supposedly no more than an astral weapon. Beings born to be controlled, manipulated, and ill-used since time immemorial. She had never entertained the idea of something more. In fact, she hardly had a name for herself. Well, she did have a moniker. But it was a meaningless one, whose sole purpose was to identify her as a weapon. Perhaps out of pity, perhaps out of kindness, the man bestowed upon her a new name. It was from that moment she would truly blossom. Rosetta. It was his gift to her. One she would treasure and love for eternity. With every union comes an inevitable separation. When his journey neared its final chapters, as he took up arms against the god of destruction, I returned to the forests of Lumassier. After my return to the archipelago, I briefly longed for his companionship, but the flora and fauna kept me company. Decades came and went, and one day I would encounter yet another young visitor to the island. There was no mistaking it. This was his offspring. I realized at that very moment the time had come. He had entrusted this child to me from the ends of the skies. My heart swelled, but I concealed my excitement, flashing naught but a smile at the young captain. I would join the up-and-coming Skyfarer's crew on the Grand Cipher for another journey across the skies, this time as a bystander. During their travels, they would experience joys and triumphs alongside loss and hardship. I continued to observe from afar, doing my best to obscure my true intentions. My roots, before long, my ambivalence would come to a head. My convictions had begun to waver. Was this the right approach? Of course, I was conscious of reality. I knew their journey wouldn't be easy. They would have to face the harsh life the skies had in store for them. And with our foes only becoming more and more cumbersome even for myself, could I possibly protect them? My presence on the Grand Cipher was inconsequential, and at worst, a hindrance to the crew. I thought if I weren't here, the captain, Eo, the entire crew would handle themselves just fine. Perhaps the time had come to retire to the forest once more. But as I was preparing to leave, Eo grabbed my hand so sweetly, so innocently, and said she needed me to stay. I couldn't bring myself to abandon her. I would be the bystander no longer. Everyone in the crew had a role to play, and I would be the exception no more. Finally, I found my purpose. I was free to experience the skies once again, hand in hand with the captain. It wasn't duty or obligation that anchored me to this crew. It was love. And I promised to always protect them. I would leave no regrets in the skies. Thus, our journey continued. Only this time I felt that I was a true member of the Grand Cipher. Yes? Please be careful. All right, see you. Stabby alert! 
It's go time! Heads up, people! <laughs> <laughs> you Say you're good! After you! Are you even getting closer to Master's level? I think so. That was great! <laughs> Just like that! <laughs> five feet! Can we take five? They just keep coming! But we'll show them who's boss! Huh? <laughs> it's over! Coming right I'll take this! Stay up for now! Break and break! I want to get left behind! Just like that! That's one wave down, but looks like there's still more of them. I'm not liking the look of this, but don't let it intimidate ya. It's safe in this one. Following! They're in my sights. Very cool. The honor's Couldn't all mine. I better myself. <laughs> I'm not liking the look of this, but don't let it intimidate ya. On my mark, break and lay. Now, we will prevail. Yep. Looking good. On to the next! Close call. Lead the way! Oh no! And... I think that's everything! You are awesome out there! Skyfarers never fail. Yes, can I help you? Here it is. This one, yes? It's in your hands now. Okay, people, it's go time. Here we go! That's one way down, but looks like there's still more of them. They just keep coming, but we'll show them who's boss.
come to view. What do you think? This one, yes? Please be careful. Easy peasy. Keep them out. Let's go. Cut them down. Way to go, Captain. You too, Eo. That's one way down, but looks like there's still more of them. They just keep coming, but we'll show them who's boss. Dragon leg. Hit them now! Right. We will prevail! Yeah, Don't good. expend all your magic. I'm old enough to manage my mana, like thank that. you very much. That was great! <laughs> On my mark! That's one way down, but looks like there's still more of them. Well, I'm not liking the look of this, but don't let it intimidate you! Don't hold back! <laughs> Look at you! That'll teach him! Bring it on! <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Take that! Well, I'm not liking the look of this, but don't let it intimidate ya! <laughs> Just like that! <laughs> to view the requests? Here it is. I can make the arrangements at once. It's in your hands now. to try this out. Thanks, he's up again. 
It just keeps coming! But we'll show them who's boss! <laughs> Dragon leg! They're weaker now! Oh, come on! Oh, just cut them down! Hey, that really worked! I on guess so. Looking good. Just like that! Looks like we got a second to catch our breath before things heat up again. I'm not liking the look of this, but don't let it intimidate ya. Catch this! Uh, looking good. Now, take this! You're getting better. You think so? Uh, looking good. I'll finish this. Just like that. Fine, B. Can we take five? I'm not liking the look of this. But don't let it intimidate ya. Breaking the look right after you! Don't expend all your magic. I'm old yeah. enough to manage my mana, more. thank you very much. Breaking leg! Look at Follow me! We turned the tide! It was a pleasure! After you! And I think that's everything. You were awesome out there. Just catch this! Uh, 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 
Looking good. Well done. Uh, just like that. Don't move. On me. <laughs> Just like that! On my uh, I'm not liking the look of this! But don't let it intimidate ya! Great work! Let's just focus on the path ahead. Looking good! Just like catch this! All together! Looking... And... I think that's everything! You were awesome out there! We did it! And we did it together! Yep. 
Perfect. I'll always be by your side. And we'll finish the next wave in no time. They just keep coming, but we'll show them who's boss. Yeah, turn them against each other. Just like Break that. Time to shine. Cut them down. There's still more to come. Yeah. Quite right. Great. Let's move. Focus up, Leo. <laughs> Yeah. Good work. Keep it up, and we'll finish the next wave in no time. I'm not liking the look of this, but don't let it intimidate you. Look and take this! You're getting better. You think so? On my mark. How's this? Get him! Yeah! Oh, what are you doing? I'm uh, not liking the look of this, but don't let it intimidate ya! Break and leg! All through! Batter up! Got you! Keep it up, crew! Yes! Okay! Fight! That was great! Uh, You're weaker now! Looking good. Just get Catch this. Follow me. What? Superb. I said it better myself. Looking good. Follow this. Follow through. After you. And I think that's everything. You were awesome out there. Should do it! 
Right behind you! You got it! We're the best! That's right! <laughs> Leave it to me! And... I think that's everything! You were awesome out there! We made it through. Skyfarer. Want your weapons tempered? I'll handle it. How about that? Come back sometime. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Welcome, welcome. I have met you. Never hurts to have some backup, right?
Mission complete! to view the request? What do you think? This one, yes? It's in your hands now.
Skyfarers never fail. I love learning new stuff! Great! Ready for action! Great! Well, all right. Good stuff! Fresh insight. Interesting. A new technique. Intriguing. Behold, new power. Excellent. <laughs> 